My name's Chris. And I'm Christy. This is the Washing Up Podcast. Ooh. And Napland Week went high rise last night. It did indeed. It went up, up, up into the stratosphere. I was trying to like do the, they go up, diddly up, up. They, I was waiting for it. I thought you were about to sing those magnificent men and their flying machines. <laughs> Another ode to Sizzletown. <laughs> Sizzletown. Look, guys, we're just going to start out. We're not being paid. If you want to listen to a podcast, it's so much better than ours. Sizzletown, if you you're know, not listening to it. He takes three days to, to create them. A half hour episode. We create this on the fly. <laughs> I hit record and we start. <laughs> our only sound effects are made by our animals. Yes, you may see hear some of those tonight too. Um, so let's get into it, shall we? Because yes. last night was <sighs> last night was interesting. Yeah. Um, so ultimate. It started off as the so we finished off in the last episode, obviously with with Khan not winning. Um, through to finals week. But Sashi winning. Yeah. Which was, no, no, not winning the, well, we started off with Khan not winning the immediate fast forward to finals Oh, yeah, week. yeah, yeah. So, we go to the next night and they go, whoever wins this goes through to finals week, which thus rendered the whole night before <laughs> useless. And then tonight was, if you're not eliminated tonight. Oh, that's right, sorry. Okay. If, yeah, tonight yeah, yeah. was, if you're not eliminated tonight, mm, mm. you're in finals week. So the fast forward was yeah, yeah. like a two day fast forward. Now something else that we 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 worked out was tonight's elimination. We have how many people, Chris? In tonight's elimination, yeah, uh, five. And how many were in last week's elimination? It was six or five. It was six. It was one more only. Yeah. At the best, it was not a mega elimination. No. And only one went home. So the ratio was anyway. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, um, we we're, we're, well, I was saying to someone tonight online, because we were mm. talking about they were still angry and rage fueled, and I said, we're up to the stage of acceptance. <laughs> we just have... We've gone through all of the stages of grief. They've electrified each side of the fence, yep. and we, like Pavlov's dog, have just laid down and are now just taking the shocks. Yep. We're at the point now where we're... We've gone through the denial. We've gone through all of the phases. We've gone through anger. anger. We've tried to bargain Grief. with them. I've begged them to do things. <laughs> We're just at acceptance. Yep. Um, and as you'll hear when we get to it from tonight, my God, didn't Master Chef reward us for our acceptance? <laughs> so much reward. This 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 Ben Chloe finale is going to be a fucking hoot. <laughs> it's going to be oh, hilarious. God, the podcast that night is going to be. <laughs> I suggested that's the grand final. I want to audio record that live streaming. Yes, we'll I want to live stream that one. Everyone on, everyone on, and live stream it. <laughs> so, we last night they decided to do a vegetarian degustation. <laughs> I know those words. Do you know how to put them together? No, it's no sense. Well, look, I honestly think it was the KKK's annual vegetarian dinner because can we just say, Dine is so white, like. Very white. Now, now, a couple of things. First of all, this isn't actually, and I think a lot of people will be expecting me to be taking pot shots at vegetarians. No, no. I'm not actually. I do agree they should do a little bit more vegetarian cooking mm. here and, and there. And I think it was great to give um, second bite a plug and, yep. you know, get the the vegetables in to show what could be done with them. Bake Off, Bake Off have, done, have done Vegan Week because a couple yep. of people said, oh, vegan. Bake Off have actually done Vegan. vegan. Yep. So, you know, it, it is doable. Um, mm-hmm. But I thought that the idea itself of vegetarian food wasn't a, a, a bad idea. Mm. When they also talked, though, about the donations for Second Bite, I sat down and did the math on it. Uh-huh. Basically, every diner paid the equivalent of about 170 bucks a head, yep. which works out to be, at that sort of restaurant, an average degustation menu. So basically, yeah, everyone cheaper, paid. Yeah. It, basically, everyone paid an, an 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 average degustation menu for that one. Yeah, um, which is their, pretty good. And like, their, and their first course was cucumber. <laughs> it's got to be fresh. You paid for water. Fresh. You paid for water, guys. You paid for water. Hey, right. fancy water. Water that got the skin of it soaked into soy sauce and made into a granita. <laughs> So what they did tell us, which I found fascinating, was they talked about Second Bite. And Sesame like, seeds sprinkled on top. And Second Bite's a great organisation, and there are other mm. organisations out there, but Oz Harvest. Harvest and all those sorts of things as well. Um, and, and my father, during you know, his younger days, did work with Matthew Talbot Hostel and things like that, where mm-hmm. they'd go around and, and give, re- repurpose food and things you like that. You know who owns that place? Hmm? Wesley Mission. Wow. There you go. <laughs> and so... What happened was they said that, and, and all of the food that we get rid of, 
yeah. goes through second bite, which led us to some very interesting ponderings. Mm. First of all, some poor bastard out there got Ben's Lamington. <laughs> and I feel really bad <laughs> for whoever got guy. that and went, like, they're, they're, they're possibly down on their luck. They're potentially, you know, someone who could be homeless. They may just not, may just not be able to afford their groceries that week or may just be struggling and need a bit of a hand. But I feel for the poor homeless person who's there and they come along and go, here you have... What the fuck's this? And and they've gone, is this an ode to Cube Dad? <laughs> like, am I just supposed to take picture selfies of myself with this? If I take this, do I become a Klansman? Yeah, they're like, it's a Lamington. They're like, I'm no, homeless, not. not stupid. Yeah, no, 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 seriously, what is it? It's a Lamington. No, no, seriously. <laughs> seriously. <laughs> also, a couple of people on Twitter pointed this out. How the fuck do parfaits keep? <laughs> like the dude. Which poor bastard got a granita? Mm-hmm. Like, who's getting, like, granita slushies? <laughs> Second bite. There you go. Granita slushy. Mm, That's just, just what I needed. Some of that stuff. A and, and quince granita. You know what that means? If they've been doing this for the entire run of the show, mm. somebody got white chocolate veloute. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they mean what was in the pantry and not used. I know what they mean, but come on. Well, I let's like use our idea. imagination. I like the idea they're boxing up <laughs> <laughs> the prepared meals. Yeah. Well, I have said that next season I want to see them do a delivery challenge mm-hmm. where they put them on menu log and somebody has to ride Run the, the Vespa to deliver it. <laughs> I want to see that challenge. So we ended up with... Hit us up, MasterChef. We'll write your challenges. So everyone drew the knives out and they had four savoury... Well, as savoury as you can get with vegetarian. Yeah. And two desserts. Yes. And the look on Jess's face when she drew knife four. Ah! <coughs> I'm hilarious. And then she tried desperately to Sashi swap with Sashi. Swap? And George looked at her with disdain and went, you're not swapping. Yeah. Now, what was worse than all of the knives and all of the order of people getting the knife pull and, and putting people in different places was mm. George ran the kitchen. Uh, they should have punched him in the face. All right, brother, let's go. All right, so let's let's start. Let's go, brother. Now, again, chances are, if you really love Chloe, you're not listening to us. Mm. I'm not going to bag her out unfairly, but I will point out they did walk her step by step and with by the hand through the first three steps yep. of the cook. She was walked. Um, Sashi comes in and he just Khan comes, comes in, in. And he just goes, "Oh, you got this," and walks away from him. Ben comes in. <laughs> And George starts just ridiculing him and making fun of him. Yes. Oh, you got no idea. You don't know what you're doing. Well, you walk Chloe into the pantry and told her what flavors go with what. Yeah. What are you doing for Ben? You know, Ben. You give it. him. You give him celeriac, which for one, is not something that you need to fucking hero. It's a fucking puree on the side. Ben, Everyone. Ben took him right idea. Yeah. Which was I, I'm going to make a celeriac puree, and everyone went. It's what it's there for. Yeah, yeah. That's all I've seen a celeriac do. Now... I presume you can make chips with it. Now, the thing was, the the ingredients and your... They go knife pull determined it. And, and again, we take them at their word. But we don't have any guarantee that they kept the mm. ingredients where they were supposed now, to Now, the be. other thing we didn't need... To, what didn't need to happen with that fucking knife pull is for the other two judges to see it. Gary and George had... Uh, no, Gary, Gary and, Matt. and Matt had no need to know. At this point of the competition, yep. they had no need to know who was cooking what. Yep. The first dish comes out. So Chloe's cucumber dish comes out. And they don't say, this looks like an interesting cucumber dish. They go, oh, Chloe plates so well. That looks so good from Chloe. It's like uh-huh. instantly they've clocked who the person is. Mm-hmm. And all the way through, they were clocking the person. Yep. Not the dish, and they were making value judgments on each dish mm-hmm. as they came out based on the person. Yep, that's a bit shit. It is indeed. So, so Chloe got cucumber, did a granita, and a and she used the seeds, and she did, did she do the, she did a she yeah, did yeah, granita, she did a, she, yeah. but she did the um I thought it was great. She did the skins as a the char as a no, soy yeah. thing, and then she did the charred cucumber. But did Gary tell her about the soy seaweed? George, George sorry. Yeah, he did. I'm fairly certain. That's what it sounded like. Anyway, we're not going to comment on her too much because people yell. Um, Khan. Yes. What a fucking He queen. is in a zone. Yep. He's like, like I've got broccolini. I have got this. He is in an absolute... And the thing was, like, he didn't need 
the instruction when he walked into the kitchen. No. They walked in and he goes, what are you going to do? And he goes, I'm doing this, 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 this. And George just went, yeah, go. All right, see ya. Do it. And the problem wasn't that they didn't give Khan the help. It was the fact they probably shouldn't give Chloe Probably that much help. help at this point. Yep. Especially in that in that challenge. Um, so Khan Broccolini smashed it out of the park, mm-hmm. and you knew straight away after they they test they tested the first two that those two were were not going to be at the end of it. Yep. They were they were in the running to be the best dish of the day. Yep. Right. Automatically. Then Ben. Yeah. Now, when he's given a dodgy vegetable, yeah, because fucking celeriac. Seriously. I wouldn't have fucking known. I, I wouldn't have known what to do with it. Who the fuck wants a fucking dish when period was, with celeriac? When was the last time you heard someone say, "You know what? I could really go right now." Some celeriac. celeriac. No. What would you do? Mushrooms. Just got those. What else could you fucking do? Capsicum. Tomatoes. There's a <laughs> wide variety of vegetables out there. Doesn't need to be celeriac. And again, I feel for the poor bastards mm. at second bite <laughs> who get celeriac. <laughs> who, you know, the box comes from second bite and it's like, delivery. Oh, wow, we've got the. What the fuck's this? <laughs> it reminded me of Billy Connolly's sketch about growing up in the, growing up in the Glasgow tenements, <laughs> talking about the Lady McLean's cookbook. And his mother had Lady McLean's cookbook. <laughs> And it featured this, there was something for, for involving venison. And in brackets it said, just the perfect thing to do with all that leftover, leftover venison. venison. <laughs> and he's like, like, you know, we're in a tenement building. And you go, my mother, and you're like, eh, what the fuck are we going to do with that venison? <laughs> Fucking room full of it. What the fuck are we going to do? And it's like, that's, like, that was what this felt like. Like, second bite's going, celeriac, anybody? <laughs> celeriac? Um... No, and, and poor Ben. Look, I mm. felt so bad for him, and I don't really feel bad for Ben quite quite often. No. Um, but in that situation, you got stuck with a dud. Then George, then George had an interaction with Jess that I was, and again, I, I can only imagine what other people felt. I was really just going, what the fuck? Mm. So he kept on referring to Sashi later on as big boy, um, which was fucking creepy. But... Jess comes in, yep. and all he does with Jess is go, I love those pigtails. Those pigtails look amazing. Ben, if only you could grow hair like that, you could have pigtails too. You know, so, what the George, fuck? are you, like, telling us what you go looking for in those classifieds? Do we now know what's happening on your bucks night? Like, is that what's going on? But You're going what, for the what worried pigtail me was, look? But what worried me was mm? the way that he, like, focused on Jess's pigtails. Yep. It's like, she's... Technically, like the closest we've come to somebody actually doing what they're supposed to do with their hair in a commercial kitchen. <laughs> Pull it back. Yeah, like I, I mean, saw Chloe Dane to like just generally tie it. Yeah, and back. I would have thought that working in the professional kitchen that they actually would have made them tie their hair back. Yeah, didn't happen. No, but you know, one can dream of like health and health safety on food <laughs> and not having um, hair in their food. So then Jess decided. That she really wanted to do a dessert, and they went, you can't do a dessert. So then Jess comes up with this logic and goes, I have to make it sweet because it's going into the dessert. It's, it's the last savoury. And, and she was determined to force eggplants into it as well. Yeah, she already said that beforehand. So she said all this beforehand, in the outside in the lounge waiting. Um, mm-hmm. She's sitting there and she's like, I hope it's eggplant, I hope it's eggplant, and I'm going to make it sweet. Now, I'm just going to press pause there. If we rewind back about eight weeks ago, mm. who else made a miso eggplant? Hmm. Let me think. I don't know. Would that be Sarah? Yes. Quite possibly. Yeah, so she did a miso eggplant way back then. So is that where this... Was being derived from? Maybe. Maybe. We've seen that happen a couple of times this year. Yeah, and we'll talk about that again shortly because it happened tonight. Um, mm. and, and, and also the, the dish that Jess did tonight was not only a callback to, to Reese, but it was actually a callback to last year too and one of the last immunity challenges. Right. And it was made last year as well. Mm-hmm. But mm. back to last night because Jess had been saying openly in the kitchen, yeah. I'm going to make it sweet. Mm. I'm going to make it sweet. I'm going to make it sweet. I'm going to make it sweet. And George is standing there going, yep, yep. All right. Yep, yep. Then he does, she does a taster for him. And George goes, oh, that's sweet. <laughs> that's too sweet. Now, again, oh. we've said about helping and not mm. helping. But if she's been saying to you that sweet, this is going to be sweet, this is going to be sweet, this is going to be sweet, you can't then act shocked that it's sweet. 
Mm. It's almost like she foreshadowed. Well, you know, we picked up the, you know, six litres of sugar she was pouring into the miso. Yeah, that might have been part of it. <laughs> you know, look, the you know, National Sugar Council would have been delighted. Yeah. They don't get good press anymore, so mm. it's the best they've got. The thing is, Jess is a pastry chef in the making. You know, we know she's a dessert person and her palate is shaped around that. Um, she's admitted she... a few times this competition that my, my palate's too sweet. Yeah. But that goes back to, again, we said it the other night, um, I've said it a million times, I get yelled at it all, about it all the time and I don't care. They haven't encouraged her growth in a no. way they should have. And it's not Jess, it's the judges. And we heard a couple of people tonight really just verbalise it and come straight out and say, don't do anything risky, just keep it simple. Yep. You know, don't risk. And it's like, this show's risk adverse at the moment. It really shouldn't be. So, Sashi. Now, this is where I absolutely found it fascinating. Mm -hmm. George turns around to Sashi and goes, the first dish... No, first of all, he goes, come on, big boy! Big boy, and I thought Sashi was going to pop him one. And then (laughs) um, someone tweeted out later on that they wanted Reese to walk into the kitchen and just start calling George big boy and standing over the top of him and threatening him. What's just up, big boy? You want to taste my dessert, big boy? You want, you want it? You want that? You want, yeah, eat, eat the dessert. Eat the dessert, big it's, boy. It's his... There's this bro culture that I it's horrible. really hate. And I know it's coming out of this whole thing of people trying to break through toxic masculinity, but it actually plays into the bro culture, which is just another form of... Because you, you see it with him, with the guys. He's like, come on, brother. Yeah, brother. Let's do that, brother. And what does he say to the women? Oh, Good work, girls. Like, it's... It's condescending. It is. And it, and it actually shows that you're not able to relate to people um, without their gender coming into play. Yep. So what we had was then Sashi is told mm. by, by George, keep it fresh, keep it light. It's the first dessert course. You've got to keep it light and fresh and bouncy and, and it shouldn't be too heavy. It should be like you're wandering through a field at Springtime. Oh, no, sorry, that was Matt Preston describing it later on. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. technically it was a wintry field. <laughs> <laughs> and Sashi's response was, you're right. I'm going to make an apple pie. I'm making a fucking deconstructed apple pie. <laughs> cream. Cinnamon. <laughs> more cream. Stewed more apples. More cream. Stewed apples. Um, looked amazing. <laughs> it did. Like, I'm not complaining. Like, I would down that. Like, I have absolutely no qualms with the fact that Sashi won. Because mm-hmm. that dish looked fucking incredible. What I did love yeah. was Gary, George spent all this time saying that this is what this dish needs to be. Sashi made the exact opposite. Uh-huh. And Matt, it, Matt and, and Gary, Gary went, that's perfect. Yep. That is an amazing dish. Exactly the opposite of what George Columbaris told him to do. Mm. Maybe the trick there is don't listen to George. George. <laughs> um, now... Now, then Reese came in and had the last of the desserts. Yep. A bit like last of the Mohicans, yeah, last of the desserts. <laughs> you could see it'd been a very long night by this time. Like, Reese looked tired. I felt really bad for Reese having to sit there and waiting and waiting and waiting. Mm. And it kind of showed he tried to be really fancy and mm. didn't quite stick the landing. No. But it was a good attempt. I mean, granted, he, and he also had the problem that nobody else had. Mm. George had nobody else at the end of that shift to annoy. <laughs> like, they're all finished. Reece? Let's see, Reese. He stood over the Reece? top of him and he's like, what's going wrong? What's going on? Well, you got, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, you know what? Help me fuck off. <laughs> Leave me alone. Hey, big boy, go see what Sashi's doing. <laughs> now, he also referred to Jess's dish as, you know, about, about it being savoury-esque. No, no. Just fucking savoury, George. You said four savoury dishes. And yep. you went, Sav- should be, it should be savoury-esque. No, it just needs to be fucking savoury. Mm. It was. There is that idea in a Giga station that the last savoury course is supposed to kind of flow into the next, like into the dessert, but it doesn't have to be sweet. It doesn't have to be... It could just be a flavour that, that is the bridge. Now, let's quickly mention Reese before we finish up. Yeah. So, Reese's dessert. Yeah. Where have we seen it before? Hmm. I don't know. It's almost like Reese has made something very similar, like, three times now. Oh! 
I've never seen a sphere with shards on top and a fucking sauce. He, what do you mean? He keeps making the same thing. We kept making the same thing. Past tense. Until Jess um, stole it tonight. Until Jess did it to him. <laughs> it's kind of like, again, it, it's kind of like the ultimate tragedy where Reese was reesed to death. Because <laughs> Jess actually, if you look at what Jess made. The power of the sphere and shards Jess, and sauce. Jess basically made the dessert that Reese has Triple made three S. times in a row. Um, she, sphere, basi- shard, shard, she basically shards. went with that tonight. Yeah. Um, so... The judging really, they, they, Chloe and Sashi and Khan were the three best. Mm-hmm. Um, and of those, Sashi won quite convincingly. Easily, yeah. And look, and, and you cannot, no. cannot argue that. Um, somebody did ask the question, though, on, on, on Twitter. Um, yeah. I, I do have to sort of raise it. Why is it when everyone serves vegetarian, they feel that the, the dominant, inc- dominant colour should be brown? There are brown schmears everywhere. <laughs> Do they think, is that like saying that vegetarian is it a shit? Is it a statement? It's um, a really nice vegetarian food out there. <coughs> so colourful. So then we get to tonight. Look at a fatouche. <laughs> so tonight began with a shot of the house and everybody longingly sort of staring and going, this could be my last day. And then Sashi just walks in and goes, hi guys, how you going? <laughs> <laughs> like everyone else is in black and Sashi wanders in and like this white shirt. And like, there you go, guys. What you doing? Good to see you. He was really Michael Scott, wasn't he? He, he really <laughs> was Michael Scott. And then to further Michael Scott it, yeah. they brought Sashi in and put him up on the gantry. <laughs> yes. The doors swing open, they walk in and all you hear is <laughs> only Sashi <laughs> applauding. <laughs> The judges are just standing there. There's nobody on Pitsashi on the gantry. No. So we got to hear what the sound of one man clapping was. <laughs> and it was sad. No, it was Sashi. It was Sasha. <laughs> so we, we just... <laughs> it was my favourite moment of the night. It was mm. just Sashi going... <laughs> really, that was your favourite moment and not Matt feeding Reese his one-inch banana? <laughs> that was my favourite innuendo of the night. <laughs> um... No, actually, actually, I had a, a better one than that. So, Gary started off the night by round one. Mm-hmm. You you will be tasting my and lifted the lid and and during the promos, I won't lie. During the promo all week, whenever he goes, you will be tasting my. I've been yelling out penis because <laughs> everything's better when you yell penis. <coughs> it really is. So try it at a funeral. <laughs> Here we, we we commit to the earth, beloved penis. penis. <laughs> well, it's wonderful. <laughs> okay, so um, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Penis. penis. Um, so what we had was apparently a tangent. It looked just like a random plate of crap. It didn't look like a tangent. Apricots. Now I've got a craving for fucking apricots. It it didn't really look like it. Now what you had I to do really was really like dehydrated apricots. What you had to do, I'll remember that. So what you had to do was taste it, and then you had mm. to say what ingredient you one ingredient that you picked up. Now, what I was really pissed off with mm. was I had a strategy for this. Yeah. And Chloe fucking stole it. <laughs> Just know what's in the Moroccan. Know what's in a Moroccan tangent. No. Look, Mar- Chloe, for all the shit that annoys us, has skills and she has knowledge. Like she, she does. actually does. No, she does. But tonight, it was fucking obvious that her mind is on the prize. Oh yeah, hundred percent. So, so basically, they all went in and forever mm. tasted this fucking dish. <laughs> Literally forever. It was fifteen minutes at the minimum of people tasting, thinking. We had dramatic music for no reason. Okay, this no been, less than six yeah. times. This would have been me, unless I was fucking hungry. This would have been to walk up flat leaf parsley, like just looking first and then tasting. Walk up, go, that's what it is, walk away. Walk up, that's what it is, Pine walk nuts. away. I never thought we'd have an in-depth conversation on what the pear-like things were. But we did. Yes. But they were both in monologue form. Ben having a monologue about, about thinking, you know, this is what they were. And then... Did you see the mega troll, though? Yes. Oh, no, it was Reese who got the pear, that's right. Yeah. I was waiting for Reese for them to... I'm like, oh, will they... Will they troll Ben and put a pear down in front of him? <laughs> yeah, I thought, they, I thought they'd do that. I thought they would do that. <laughs> so... Ben fucked up, first of all. Yeah. Um, and he didn't even seem that shocked by it. No. He actually seemed like he was shocked that he'd gone that far. Um, 
Then <laughs> you should see him now. <laughs> Top five. Oh, we'll talk about that in a minute. <laughs> Jess then was next, and then it was Reese. It was Chloe. And it was Khan. Yeah. And Australia held its collective breath. <laughs> and every time Khan tasted, there was a no, no, it was like, no. no. And again, it's. I'm just being honest with you. If you looked at Twitter tonight, every time it came around to Khan, yeah. Twitter had a meltdown that it was him. Yeah. It's like, like, no, he has to stay. There is a bolt. The audience is, by and large, on the Khan train. And it's not because it's a cult of personality. This guy's got talent, he's got passion, he's got knowledge, and he's just, he's a, he knows how to take a calculated risk, and he's obviously got the skills and, and knowledge to do those risks. So, And we'll talk about it then. At the end of this episode, we might have a bit of a quick chat about, as well, grand finals we'd like to see, because yep. I think that Khan features most prominently in most people's ultimate grand final okay, at you this think, point in time. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay, I'll yeah. save my... Save that, we'll come back to it. Okay. So, we've got... Yes. Those three ended up in the next round. This is where the competition got fucked because the second round was the one-inch cubes. Fair enough. Great. Fair enough. That's great. Blindfolded. That's cool. That's cool. Judges should take note. Yep. Blindfolded tastings. Mm-hmm. Works wonders. Right. Cool. The problem was they went over, made a decision, picked up a cube, the judges, yep. and then walked it over to the blindfolded contestant. Mm-hmm. That doesn't give randomness. That doesn't give the idea that anybody could get anything. And it gave a chance for people to look and suggest, I don't know, maybe the fact that Ben was given chocolate. Mm -hmm. The the contestant who, and again, we're not being mean to him, but a contestant who was freely admitted that he'd struggled with bits and pieces on how to use certain flavours, gets chocolate. He really is the basic bitch of the top five. And, again, we don't dislike him. But no, he's a lovely guy. But it's the way it works. Um, the problem that a lot of people had with it, and to some extent I agree, although I, Jess should have got hers. So Jess goes second. They give her a cube uh, of cheese. No. Now, I know... This was when I just lost all respect for her. I went nuts at this point because feta... And it's not parmesan fucking hard to tell have the difference. Vastly different textures and completely separate flavours. And they're not even in the same ballpark. Right? It's mm. not close. Texturally, it's not smell. close. Flavour wise, smell any All the senses, the only thing they have in common, they're both cheese. Like Reese getting salmon for tuna, you can sort of see yep. it, although there's a difference there. But you can sort of see it. Parmesan nah. and feta nah. is ridiculous. But what a lot of people also pointed out was, so Jess was specific and said feta. I said said parmesan cheese. And then she's like, I don't eat a lot of cheeses. <laughs> that just tells me you're an evil person. <laughs> she who, doesn't mean it. If you're not lactose intolerant, why the fuck are you not liking cheese? Um, so. Like that, like if you didn't like cheese, we wouldn't be married. I know. I know that. Um, so Reese had banana. I was a hundred percent. You're not an evil person. I was a hundred percent. Disrespect you because you I, don't like cheese. <laughs> I was a hundred percent. Cheese inspires emotions. Mm. It's an emotional food. It's cheese. Reese, okay. was, Reese was then fed a banana. <laughs> Matt served him up a one inch banana. And and Khan, I did ask at this point on Twitter. I said, Khan, please, you are the master of the innuendo. Don't bail on us now. And <laughs> Khan's response was, one inch. I'm out. <laughs> Thank you, Khan. <clears throat> Thank you, Khan. Um. I'm with Reese. Yeah. Don't like bananas. Don't like bananas. Fair enough. And Reese is like, I like banana paddle pops. I like banana lollies, but I don't like bananas. So he likes fake banana. Fake banana. Yep, not real banana. Um, so he'd like the banana lollies. You yeah. know, they were the only things my grandma had in the house, like that I was. What, no food? Just, just banana just, lollies? Just, and LucasAid. They're the two wow. I can remember. Her stir fries must have been amazing. <laughs> so. <laughs> It's the 1980s. <laughs> what stir fries? I've already talked. I've already hot, talked hot about my. I've already talked about my grandmother's pasta. Yes. Um, so Ben then made the dumbest comment I think I've heard this year, <laughs> and that says something. So they bring up a cube of avocado. Oh, you'd have to be un Australian not to get that. It's avocado. How the fuck is not knowing avocado as an Australian? I mean, what it does tell me is that if you don't know what avocado is, you own your own house. If it was Denise, who's of Mexican descent, had said, oh, if I don't get this, I'd embarrass my, you know, 
fair enough because avocados and but again, South America. All, all it shows me is yeah. you own a house because apparently well, you Central know Central America I should say yep. because apparently you can't own a house if you eat smashed avo. That's the reason why you can't <laughs> can't afford a house. So mm. at which point. Reese then got tuna wrong. So this is the point, right? <laughs> Where okay, so you saw Jess stumble on the ice, okay, and then Reese just caused the whole fucking accident into the wall, <laughs> into the wall, and a long skate. Stephen Benbury. <laughs> Stephen Benbury. Stephen Benbury just skating on through, and when they cut to him in the the bit of camera. <laughs> I have never seen a happier person. I don't know person. which gods you were sacrificing to, Ben, but he's keep not, doing it. And the thing is, he's not even pretending at this point that it's not luck. He's, like, he is openly embracing it. If he wins MasterChef, it's going to be like Tony Abbott getting leadership of the Liberal Party. <laughs> oh, I didn't want him. <laughs> um, it's legitimately, though, and again, it's not before people jump on us. Oh, you're saying, no, 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 he's not. Bad. But look at the skill sets. He's come a long way with what he's got. He has shown some growth. And I reckon he'll go far after this. I reckon he's got but the determination. In his, and, in his own chosen yeah. field, which is likely to be a steak and seafood restaurant yeah. or something like that, not a lot of this other stuff that you've got to do at this point of the contest. Mm. And Ben is finding it hilarious. <laughs> and you know what? I'm with him. Teflon Ben. Who's he taken out? <laughs> He's taken out Huda. He's taken yes, out Samira. Samira. I mean, come on. Like, this guy is the fucking, like, assassin. He's, he's, he's the elimination assassin. So then we got a showdown that I don't think anyone anticipated tonight. No. Reese versus Jess. Now, on this, Mr. Preston has gone, oh, my gosh, you know, once a year there is an elimination that like rocks the master chef contestants and mm-hmm. we can tell you which one that was that was Huda versus Ben thank you yeah. very much so Ag- fuck you again we had to podcast after a night drinking where you we heard weren't that. going you heard that we we came in from a night out because my phone melted <laughs> with people going we were You're just podcasting. trying to watch a gender bending performer based cabaret theater that was fan fucking tastic with a couple of large skull cocktails yeah cocktails and what do we get my phone melting down. down going, please record, please record. We <laughs> need you to record. So we gave in because, you know, we're those sorts of people. Mm. So <sighs> they can do whatever they wanted. They can. And Reese goes, fuck it, I'm doing savoury. And you know what? Good. I was happy to see him do savoury. And then I realised for Reese, this should have been something he stepped out to do. Six weeks ago. <coughs> yep. Now, when Jess decided to do her one, and I mean, she did a dessert, mm-hmm. and she did technically the same sort of dessert that Reese had done three times in a row. But she experimented with flavours. Experimented with flavours. That was good. And then Chloe did the bit to, bit to camera where she said, at this point of the competition, you don't want to be experimenting. You don't want to be doing anything unusual. You just want to keep it safe, which is the problem with this end of the contest. People who we've seen that have been amazing yep. have branched out. Mm-hmm. And look, a lot of people will say, well, you guys loved Ben last year and Ben did ice creams pretty much for the last third of the show. He did. But Ben didn't start with ice cream. No, he And Ben that. did a mountain of other things all the way through the competition, mm-hmm. not just ice cream. It was only in that final third that he discovered ice cream. And, like, Japan Week's sort of the week. Yeah. And he discovers ice cream around then and then got really good at it really fast mm. and was doing different things with it. Absolutely. It wasn't the same, like, a bowl of ice cream. It mm. wasn't the exact same thing. There were tons of things around it to make it a bit different. Mm. Um, and in the grand final, obviously, he couldn't just make ice cream. He had to make savoury as well. Exactly. So he didn't. But... We've seen Elena, for example. Elena mm. grew, and some of her best dishes were at that tail end, and she started doing all sorts of things. Well, she got into her first elimination, and it was then she pulled out the most spectacular dish. And I think it was about week three. Now, I had my spidey senses around Elena in week one. Yeah. That, and I'm like, oh, she's fucking hot. <laughs> but, like, hey, Elena. <laughs> but mostly I was like, Oh my god! Like just and so, I, and because they didn't feature her much, I like like where's where's that woman? Where is she? And then I learned today, I'm like, where's Elena? Oh, they showed her. 
briefly before flushing onto Callum. No, no, who was that year? Um, fucking. Well, they, they were sure as hell weren't uh, focusing on Trent. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so we um, what was I saying? Oh my god, what are we up to? Okay, so I was talking about Reese. So he pulls out this chicken dish, right? Which is essentially something that you'd expect to see in week three. Um, everyone does a roast chicken dish around that time. People pull out the, this is my take on a roast. Um, who was it this year? It might have even, even been Reese that they did the little bits of onion and they served the Jew in the onion petals. And it looked very pretty, but it was still my take on a roast, yeah. um, a roast chicken. Now, when he was talking about it, I thought he said he was going to do a chicken pot pie. I'm sure he said he was doing a chicken yeah, I pie. I thought I heard something like that. So I was waiting to see some pastry whip out because that shows another one of his skills. I was waiting to see... But I like what he did. Yeah. That was the thing. I liked what he did. Unfortunately, I... he forgot about his chicken skin. Um, yeah, which... Mm. Now, I tweeted out tonight that if the editing is as lazy as it usually is, mm-hmm. I know who's going home. Now, we had the conversation at the time. Yep. They were showing Jess. Jess was in trouble. They're showing Jess. We looked at each other and went, Reese is going, going home. home. Sure enough. I really wish the editing wasn't lazy. Yeah. Because they do this all the time. It's mm-hmm. the show you one person, and it's the one person in peril, and it's the one person in peril, and the last part of it, they go, oh, by the way, oops, this didn't work, gone. But you know what they changed up tonight? They mentioned Jess first, and she thought she was going home, but boom, she wasn't. But, she was staying. But a couple of times, though, this series, they've done that. So they, as I said mm. to Brandon, who asked about it, and said, but they changed that up. And I said, never focus on the editing at the tail end of which order they do it in. Yeah. Focus on the show. Yeah. Because that, that giveaway is, it's a really obvious tell. Yeah. A couple of other things before we finish up with that. Mm. You had to really have a count tonight on the number of times they mentioned that Jess was 19. Yeah. They need to stop mentioning that Jess is 19. Because Red Gum are going to sue. Red Gum will sue. Um, if you go and check our Twitter feed, myself and John Slacksmith had a really fun exchange based on lyrics from Red Gum yeah. um, talking about it. Um, Jess also described herself as going bay leaf crazy. <laughs> Is that it's like a, Pac-Man fever? It's like batshit crazy except, you know, herbal. <laughs> you don't bay have leaf a bad crazy. Ch- Is it when you have like a bay bad... Bay leaf nuts. <laughs> <laughs> you have a bad experience with spices and herbs. <laughs> The missing Spice Girl. Yes, Bay Leaf. Bay Leaf crazy. <laughs> you know, it was Baby Spice and Ginger Spice and Bay Leaf crazy. crazy. <laughs> um, She's their number one fan now. She has a show to all of that. Baby Spice and you ever. Thank you, Bay Leaf crazy. Um, that should become that should become Jess's alter ego now. <laughs> Bay Leaf crazy. <laughs> you know, she needs to start a YouTube channel and just call it Bay Leaf crazy. She needs the platform added ass so yeah. she can wear those like, and she's got the pigtails like Baby Spice. Yeah. So then we get her like a Union Jack dress, and she can just chase Peter Gilmore and Reynolds around. <laughs> yes. I'm Bay Leaf crazy. <laughs> <laughs> It's a stalker name. Hi, Ranald. BLC. Hi. She signs everything <laughs> BLC in blood. No, yes. no it's just chocolate. chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> I've written it on an anglaise. How can you write on an anglaise? <coughs> I'm bay leaf crazy. Don't ask me how. <laughs> so she made an orange and bay leaf ice cream mm. with quince and pear granita. Yep. And don't forget the potato chips on top. Which made it look a lot like the yeah the same thing that Reese did with his shards. And yes, it did. I'm like, hold on, is that a sphere? Is that a granita slash sauce? And are those shards? Reese has just been killed, assassinated, Reese style. Reese taken out by a Reese dish. Yes. So Reese goes home. Um, Jess was sobbing a lot more than Reese was. Mm. Um, they are all really sad. And look, then they I went, feel for them. They were obvious good mates. And I mean, was. And uh, I'm. I haven't had confirmed. I thought Reese was gay, but they're very close, and it made me question. I'm like, no, they're probably just really close mates. So I have no idea. Yeah, but I want to liked was that. Yeah, sorry, I shouldn't be like worrying about someone's sexuality. That's ridiculous. So. It's all good. It's all good. Anyway, yeah. What I liked personally was yes. they all got really sad and cried, mm. and they're all emotional. And then they went, "You're the top five And they went, "Yay!" Yay! <laughs> and suddenly got really happy. Remember, there's two hundred fifty thousand dollars at stake. Yay! Yes! We can win a hubcap! <laughs> I still maintain 
the trophy is a hubcap to the Vespa. <laughs> I have said this every year. Mm. I will continue to say it. They're giving away the Vespa one piece at a time. <laughs> All right. So to finish it off, mm. so there's something different. Yeah. The number one question yes. on Twitter this week mm-hmm. has been you have to recast a movie, you have to recast every character but one with Muppets and keep one human. Yep. So what I put out to Twitter was, you have to keep one of the three judges. Yes. You have to replace the other two with Muppets. I did also <laughs> say you could do it with Sesame Street characters. Mm-hmm. So let's go through some of the options, because we had a lot of responses. Oh my god, when you were a kid, did you ever sing this song? Ten cents for half an hour, in bed or in the shower, I won't be coming back. <laughs> She's got a dirty crack on the Muppet Show tonight. I don't know. No. <laughs> so. <laughs> I don't know where I learned that from. I don't know where you learned that from either, but now I'm scared. <laughs> All right. So Anna on Twitter says, keep Matt, replace Gary with Miss Piggy and George with Beaker. <laughs> we, there's going to be a bit of a theme coming up here. You're going to hear a lot of Beaker. Um, Leanne re- replied, keep Matt, replace George with Stadler or Waldorf <laughs> and replace Gary with Beaker. <laughs> Ayla said, keep Matt and replace Gary and George with Professor Honeydew and, and Beaker. <laughs> Noticing a bit of a trend. Um, Kim Spicer, keep mm. Matt, replace George with Beaker. <laughs> and there can be one and only one other choice, Swedish Chef. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, because Matt is so verbose, it makes sense that you get the two least verbose <laughs> characters. Apart from animal. Julie Davis said that she, she's a traditionalist. Keep Cookie Monster and Swedish Chef as the two. <laughs> um, Jen Gawley said keep Matt, replace the others with Fozzie Bear for light entertainment. And Miss Piggy because you need a female judge and she won't take crap from anyone. Um, hey, creamy. There were also suggestions of replacing Matt with Sam the Bald Eagle. Um, <laughs> A couple of people. It's very appropriate. A couple of people suggested um, Bert and Ernie. Mm-hmm. Um, Jane said that the the count would be quite good at the time reminders. Um, <laughs> one <laughs> one minute to go. Uh, 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 30, uh. Thirty seconds left. Ah 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 ah. But there were there were. I like. Counting, counting, <laughs> counting. Just like Smith also had one of my favourite random responses, which was Geefel and the Gonk. Ooh. So they're the ones where the Geefel's the one with the long arms that couldn't bend his arms, and then the, yeah. the Gonk's the one that fed the ge- uh, fed Geefel and got to eat the leftovers. Aha! Uh-huh. Um, Kim Spicer also had a really good random one, which was mm. he also said the backup for Beaker, because it's really popular, was Lou Zealand. I love random. As you're going to hear with yeah. my options, you're going to hear I love I love randoms. Mm-hmm. Um, Austinite also said, keep Matt, replace George with Gonzo and Gary with Fozzie Bear. Um, and Tessa White said, replace Matt with Kermit and replace mm-hmm. George with Animal. She also asked if they could uh, replace yeah. Gordon Ramsay, uh, Shannon with Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> I wasn't aware that Gordon Ramsay was, was a Muppet. Muppet. <laughs> um, I think if you call that to, him face, to his face, you might end up with a headbutt. Probably. So, yes. who would you? Okay. I'm going for a different thing. Keep George, but then bring in Waldorf and Statler just to fucking harass him. You get things like, oh, they aren't <coughs> half bad. No, they're all bad. Yeah. <laughs> all right. I have two. Yes. I had a Sesame Street one uh-huh. and then a normal Muppets one. All right. And then I'm going to go for the whole Jim Henson universe. You can do it. Yeah. Perfect. So, there we go with that. <laughs> so, my, my Muppet, my, my Sesame Street one mm. was... And both of them are the same. I would keep Matt for both of them. Yeah. I would replace the other two in the Sesame Street world with the Yip Yips. Because <laughs> I just like the idea of Matt being like, Yip, 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 Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> I like the idea of that. I've gone really far out, though, for my two for the Muppet universe. Uh-huh. I would replace George. Yeah. With Peppy the King Prawn <laughs> from Muppets Tonight. <laughs> A bit of a Lothario, a bit of a smooth talker. Thinks he's a bit you know, charming. Not yeah. quite, though. Mm-hmm. Um, and I would replace Gary with Link Hogthrob. <laughs> the egotistical maniac lead actor in Pigs in Space. <laughs> Your call. Okay, for this one, I think I'm going to keep Gary, right, and pair him up with Ludo <laughs> from The Labyrinth. Yes. Now, there's another character from the Labyrinth I'd really like to 
bring in and it's because I think that there was a bit of Muppet puppetry going on in his pants. <laughs> that is Jareth the Goblin King. <laughs> why? Because why the fuck not? He just want Bowie and MasterChef. Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> so, a bit of fun there and, and hopefully... Could you imagine him walking around, how creepy it would be like when people are seeing... I wouldn't be able to constructs to come up and go, Sarah... Do you miss me? It's like just dance magic dance. dance. <laughs> all right, so mm-hmm. thank you for all those responses. If you've got any more off the back of this, please tweet Love them. Me. Tweet Fear them in. Me. Tweet I'll them in. I'll make you cook. <laughs> That's that sounds like something that George would say on a normal night. Okay. Um, it's very George. <laughs> it is no. Do not co- no <laughs> no no. It took a while for that reaction. No, but God, I got no. a good one. N- no, let's wrap this up before you say something else blasphemous and I have to divorce you. Remember, Sunday night is also the next edition of our giveaway for the gift. Yes. We've had a few more entries. Ooh. It's not just two people anymore. <laughs> so keep your eye out for that. It's on our Facebook page. Remember yep. to like us on Facebook as well. Um, also, if you're listening to this now, you know where we are, but spread the word out. A couple of people said, oh, we can't get you on iTunes. As I say, we're available on iTunes, we're available on Libsyn, Spotify, we're available on Spotify, YouTube. we're on YouTube, and you can find us in any Carrier Pigeon. You can find us in any form of podcast browser that you've got. Carrier yeah. Pigeon, we're working Cuneiform. on. Um, I'm personally working on wax cylinder. Oh, nice. I'm going for a more runic vibe. I just think washing up in a binding ruin, ruin just to ruin. <laughs> and I'll I'll finish off Carved with into I'll finish off Neolithic. with. During the, yeah. the challenge, during the masterclass tonight, yes, Matt Preston. Oh, um, yep, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry. Hold well on, you got it. Matt Preston turned around at one point and said, yeah. "I hate washing up," and my response was, "Well, given some of the shit we've said this year, it's fair. It's fair enough." I'm still Chris, and I'm still Christy. We'll catch you all Sunday night. Waka waka.